Okay, so I did a uh, video the other day about how Facebook got into trouble because the AI identified um, black people as primates, right? So they issued an apology. And now uh, this all started back in 2015, actually. And I dug up this article, Why Google Thought This Black Woman Was a Gorilla. All right, so Jackie Al 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 Alcine, Alcini, um, basically she went through Google Photos and said, Google Photos, you're all effed up. My friend's not a gorilla, all right? So um, this is a story about an incident that happened to a 22-year-old freelance web developer, Jackie Alcine. The racist slur that caught him off guard and the machines behind it. So you may have heard about this earlier this summer. Um, June 28th, Jackie was uh, sat relaxing, half watching the BET Awards and messing around on his computer. It was just a normal evening until a selfie from his friend popped up on the Google Photo app. As Jackie scrolls through the photos, he realized the photo uh, that Google had rolled out uh, photo categorization. His pictures had automatically been labeled and organized based on what was in them. Okay, so he's... Brother's graduation, no problems. Google software totally figured it out, but as he kept scrolling, he came upon a series of photos himself and a friend at a concert. But they, but the label didn't say people or concert. Yeah, it came up um, with gorilla. It says gorilla. And I'm like, nah, that's 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 like a term that's been historically used to describe black people in general, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, Jackie is not a computer scientist because. <clears throat> How can that photo, we'll just zoom in a little bit. How can that photo be categorized as a concert when there's nothing in that actual photo that would determine it being in a concert? You know what I mean? It's, there's nothing in that photo that's going to say concert. So unless, unless you actually had um, metadata underneath the photo that had the words concert, <clears throat> that will help help the algorithm, it's not, it's not going to say concert. So... I thought I'll try. I'll try and explain this a bit better. So why why does it get why does it get get it mixed up and say that some black people are gorillas? So we, we got we got a gorilla photo here. This is one I took. I used to be a photographer before I did YouTube. This one I got signed by Jane Goodall when she was in when she was in Australia. So basically, what what the AI is doing? It's looking for contrast, right? See if I can do this without looking at the photo too much. So it's looking at the contrast between the light and dark sections, and then it, then it'll put like little little marks on there, and it's looking for all the features, and it, and it's um, trying to match up previous photos. Uh, what 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 happens is it'll feed all these just millions and millions of images into Google, and then uh, the AI will try and figure out what they are. All right. So, explain the explain a bit better here. The computer scientist explains it as well. Here we go. So, where are we here? Here we go. So this guy, Yoshia Bengio. So because to prevent a machine, uh, here we go. Here, we go, here we go. According to computer scientist Yoshia Bengio. These stories are just going to keep making headlines. And I, I totally agree because the algorithm's actually doing doing it right. It's just that we find it offensive. Because to prevent a machine from drawing an offensive conclusion, is that a question? Because to prevent a machine from drawing an offensive conclusion, I don't think that's a, <laughs> I think that's a statement, not a question. Uh, okay, they've, they've actually put a question mark there. You have to teach a machine how complex society is and just may be impossible to code around all of the deeply human social pitfalls. As he tells uh, Manush Zomorodi on this year, on, on this week's Note to Self, <clears throat> he has, we'd have to tell the machine why it makes specific mistakes, but you would not, not just uh, like two or three examples, you need like thousands of millions of examples for the machine to catch all different types of errors that we think, think exist. So you're basically just feeding the photos in, and it's and it's looking for features, right? It's looking for features. So if we go back to original how it classified things, you got the skyscrapers. It's looking for like tall, 
buildings, maybe some reflections on the windows. Now it's, uh, you know, it's looking for shapes, aeroplane there. It's looking for, you can see it's got a horizon and so forth. You've got the aeroplane wings, cars is, you know, looking for cars, looking for the wheels, body shape of all cars. All right, bikes, got that right, it's got the wheels. Graduation is actually just um, noticing the hats. So there's obviously lots of lots of hats. So what, what they'll do is they'll actually put put heaps of images in and they have the metadata underneath as well. So it's, it's found the graduation there. <clears throat> and it learns, it it's learns. The more images you put in, the more it learns. So here we go. So... So should companies like Google be even using deep learning like this if it's possible, if possibly these really offensive mistakes can happen? And uh, Benjio says, well, that's a choice I have to make. The system can make mistakes, and you have to do with the fact that there will be mistakes. So let's dig in what, how it actually works. So Google Photo uses a type of artificial intelligence called machine learning. Scientists give the machine millions of examples and teach it to start recognizing objects or words. Then through an even more specific approach called deep learning, it trains machines to start seeing patterns in the data to draw their own conclusions and to, in a way, think for itself. Because I got, I got the, I got a comment. <laughs> of course, I got, a, I got some backlash from the old, from the old video. I'll just show you that. So Frida Rente said, "Melanin impaired folks." Well, that's <laughs> that's racist to start with calling me a uh, melanin impaired folk are astounding it's no big deal because technically haha <laughs> lol 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 nothing is ever a big deal to folks like you so there we go she categorized me into race which is racist in itself nothing is ever a big deal to folks like you until it affects folks like you it's amazing that you fail to exercise true intelligence no actually i'm i used to be a computer programmer at uh, TAFE, I was the, the go-to guy for computer programming, actually. I was very good at it. Uh, you know, know that AI is man-made? Man mm, well, it's man-programmed, but the actual artificial intelligence, as as we pointed out, is is something that the, the actual machines learn for themselves. You also know it's offensive to many, just just not you, many like you. Well, see, I don't, I don't, I don't get offended easily. <laughs> like... You can make jokes about my appearance. People call me fat. I don't get offended. It's like, well, yeah, your eyes work. I'm fat. Okay. So sure, rock that Darwinism until your jogs are all confiscated by AI. Well, somebody's got a program. <laughs> I could get a job as a programmer, really. Uh, see, by the time the melanin-impaired humans, and you go, another racist comment, become aware that something is wrong, it's already too late. Now, is that due to primate in you? <laughs> Oh dear, or something else altogether. I seriously don't know what she's on about. The Frida. I just responded, I'm not melanin impaired at all. I get quite dark if left in the sun. Judging by my skin colour is actually racism. All true. So let's get back to the crux of the problem here. What's what's going on? It's basically looking... Oh, we'll, we'll just show you... Is it that one? Here we go. So... We've got a figure of how the facial recognition works. So, so first, the machine learning will say, "Okay, that's like a, a, a like a human type or animal face. You know, it's a face, right?" So, it goes, "That's a face." You know, it will say it's two eyes, a nose, etc., mouth. That's a face I'm looking at. It's not a building. It's a face, All right? So, it will look at things like oh, yeah, maybe that one's probably a good one. So then it puts little points on everything, little points. It's looking for features, you know, how big the eyes are, the nose, and this is this is where I think it's going. It's getting confused because, as you know, uh, some 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 like people have like uh, wide wide flared nostrils, and I think that's why it's categorizing. So it's looking at you know, the blackness, obviously. And the wide flared nostrils is going okay, gorilla, all right. And so that's that's why it's making that mistake. And of course, we find it offensive. It's like no, no, just because the person's got flared nostrils and dark skin, it's not a gorilla, all right. But the machine doesn't know that. It's just looking for 
It's just looking for um, data points. It's looking for something to distinguish like a human face from a gorilla face, All right? So we, we know the difference because we can see all the subtleties, but the machine can't. So going back to the original, original post here, when the machine learning is looking at this, it's saying, okay, dark skin, flared nostrils, and it's matching it with like a photo like this and going, ah, we have a match. And it puts out, punches out gorilla. It's not something that the, that the programs have programmed in to say, to say, cause it, it doesn't, it doesn't know there's a black person. All it's seeing is, is contrast points seeing contrast points everywhere. That's all it's seeing. It's just seeing points that it can, uh, uh, what is it, contrast boundaries, putting a point there, because that's uh, that's where something starts and ends. Like, I don't know, let's see. Uh, how do I explain this even better? So if you got like an object on, let's say, let's say my little piggy here. You've got it against the background there, so it's looking. It's looking for the. It's looking for the borders between the contrast points, and it's and it's pointing and it's just creating like a map. And yeah, it's offensive. <laughs> no, but nobody's nobody's disagreeing with that. But you can't blame the programmer because the programmer is not doing it. The programmer is just feeding images in. That's all the programmer is doing. And saying, like they're saying, okay. So feeding pictures of the gorillas in and saying this is a gorilla and then uh, when it's when it's comparing that to photos that it hasn't seen before, which is this person's personal photo reel, it's just trying to match them up. It's trying to match them up with the database it's got already. And I can't see how, how you can program it not to do it. So you know what they actually did? Now this is the stupid part. Well, it's, it's smart and stupid. They actually, this was the fix. This was the actual fix. This was three years later. Google fixed its racial algorithm, racist algorithm, by removing gorillas from its image labeling tech. So the AI is going, oh, that's a gorilla. Um, okay, I've matched this person and uh, it matches this other image and the metadata underneath says gorilla. I'm going to punch out gorilla and, and they've actually put a block on it now. So... <laughs> It can't actually can't actually punch out uh, its um, its uh, conclusion its match as being gorilla, and that's their fix. So they're actually admitting that three years later they 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 can't fix the AI. It's gonna it's just gonna it's just gonna offend people. So so it goes nearly three years after the company was called out has gone beyond a quick work. It hasn't gone beyond a quick workaround. And I don't, I don't think, as, as a computer scientist says, and what I, what I know as well from you know, these algorithms, I can't see how there's going to be, how they're going to fix it. It's just going to be, there's going to be just going to be a void there. So, but the thing is, I actually looked up Gorilla. I just looked up Gorilla on uh, Google Images, and it's, and it's showing, showing gorillas. So maybe it's the other way around. I'm trying to think how this would work. We're not going to trick it up, are we? So yeah, they're all they're all gorillas. They're not putting black people in there at all. So these must be images that uh, Google has fed in or have got metadata underneath. I'm sure you could fool it. I can I can create a controversial thing. I'll put some metadata underneath some images and upload them to Google and it will come up. Oh, Mike Tyson. Oh, do, 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 do. Ah, Mike Tyson wanted to fight a gorilla. Well, that's interesting. Let's click on that. I love Mike Tyson. Uh, getting sidetracked here. What the hell is this about? Mike Tyson once offered a zookeeper $10,000 to let him fight a silverback gorilla. This has to be bullshit. Sport Bible. Is this rubbish or what? Oh, he's got a tiger. Oh, we'll have to read this later. Uh, during the late eighties, oh, I know, maybe it was, maybe it was, maybe it was just high or something. 
During late 80s, during visiting a zoo, Mike Tyson offered a zookeeper $10,000 to open a gorilla cage so he can go in there and punch the gorilla who he noticed was bullying all the other primates. <laughs> I've never heard this before. That's crazy. Anyway, let's be, get back to what we're talking about. It, it's complex, man. You're not gonna. You're not going to. You're not going to change the algorithm to recognize. You know, they're not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna distinguish uh, some features and say, okay. That's that's actually bad because they, they don't know it's a, they don't know it's about you need you need a human intervention to to you know they pop out okay that's a gorilla go, no 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 that's not a gorilla that's a that's a black person you know you can't you can't do that and as a computer scientist says it's it's going to be like millions and millions and millions of images that they're going to have to intervene on so that's why they they took the easy well probably the only way out really. So here we go. So as we as we said here, we would have to have people tell the machine why it makes specific mistakes, but we would not need not just like two or three examples, we'd need like thousands or millions of examples for the machine to catch all the different types of errors that we think exist. See, so my advice is uh, just just meta tag your images, but that that's the whole point of the actual AI system is to get away with you typing in because that, that's a real pain in the ass I'm telling you like I used to meta tag some of my images when I was doing photography it's like it gets tiresome very quick if you got thousands and thousands of images and that's why you want the AI to to try and do it for you but if it's coming up as it's showing here and it's doing well it's done skyscrapers airplanes cars bikes gorillas mm, not good uh, graduation got that right too and you might pick it up years later as well. It might be embarrassing. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to fix it. Anyway, to conclude this video, let, let's have a bit of fun. So I actually looked up. I actually looked up. Really, this is the next one, is it? Animals. <laughs> actors that look like animals, I put. And talking about primates and gorillas and so forth, over here on the right, we have... George George W. Bush. Somebody obviously put in an image of him, and he came back as a chimpanzee. So we've got a bit of a double standard here. I've never heard anyone complaining that uh, George W. Uh, looks like a chimpanzee. We got uh, you know Vladimir Putin. He looks like looks like what's this? doppelganger animals. This one. Uh, we got uh, Adam Driver there. Uh, it, obviously, the algorithms caught his uh, protruding ears. Uh, John Travolta, uh, I reckon the algorithm caught on his on his uh, very light blue eyes. Uh, is this guy? I can't remember. I tell you what, I'm bad with names. I know, I know the guy. I know the guy. It's quite funny that one. Um, that one is the guy from Pulp Fiction. Name escapes me. Um, it'll come to me soon. Obviously, the beret. We've just chucked the beret on him there. This guy I don't know. <laughs> Funny dog one. Guy from the guy from uh, Twilight. Can't remember his name, of course. Uh, that's quite funny. We got Harrison. F <laughs> Harrison. F he does. He's, he's got that. He's got that little smirky smile. And he's that sort of cool, cool sort of smile. He sort of puts his. What you saying? They found it. So obviously, the algorithm caught caught um, him looking like this dog photo here. The guy from uh, the pianist. So I know the movies. I just don't know the names. I'm really bad at names, man. Uh, it, Brody, someone Brody. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. If I've seen the guy enough, I'll remember the names. Clint Eastwood, another primate. Nobody got offended by that. That didn't make the news, did it? Uh, this guy. Uh, where we go? Oh, here we go. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, big pug. Uh, this guy from, uh, he was from the social network, wasn't he? Um, I've got him down as a sloth. We've got Gordon Ramsay again. Oh, he's a soft target and he? he's got the uh, folds in the skin. We've got Snoop Dogg looking like a doggy. Uh, 
This actor has been on everything. He's in Forrest Gump, I believe. <laughs> and she's one of the best ones here is uh, Richard Branson. <laughs> That's quite cool. Let's flick through a few of these. I think that uh, John Travolta again. Guy from Modern Family. There's Eric Stone Street. President Obama. Oh, he's got, you know, they, they got his, he got his facial expression right there. So these are obviously, uh, I reckon, I reckon it'd have to be, it'd have to be like uh, algorithm, like AI algorithm type uh, searches here, putting in an image, and you know when you put in an image and go, you do a reverse Google image search, and you say, well, you know, I want to find this image, and it comes out of this. Obviously, people have found all these funny examples, and we got. Uh, Jack Black, <laughs> looks like a French bulldog. Morgan Freeman, and that is, I can't remember, where, that's a cartoon from someone, I can't remember where that cartoon's from. Michael Jackson. Um, guy from, uh, guy from uh, Back to the Future, Doc. We got, uh, what's his name, Paris Hilton, looking like an uh, alpaca. We've got Gene, <laughs> Gene Simmons. <laughs> That's a good one. There was, there was one, there was, there was a funny one here where they had uh, a cat that looks like Hitler. <laughs> you got um, Cumberbatch, who looks like an otter. <laughs> Miley Cyrus looking like a giraffe. And this, is, this, yeah, well, this, this one's fair game. It's got long hair. It's Julia Roberts. Uh, the dude from from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, is it, or one of those bands? This one, a hairless cat. I did see. Actually, I'll show you uh, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Let's run through some of these. Justin Bieber. <laughs> I think it's a fringe. It's a fringe. So this is what I mean. The Google, the algorithm is going to stuff up so many times because it's looking, it's looking for feet, it's looking for like. The actual spacing between the eyes and stuff like that. That's what it's looking for. It's looking for general shapes and everything. So we got uh, Yoda looking like the cat. Uh, Tina Turner. Will Smith. It looks nothing like Will Smith. Uh, Brody. And we got uh, Mr. Bean, Ron Atkinson looking like an owl. <laughs> There's a seal one. Well, I, I can't see this. I don't really see the resemblance here with uh, Leonardo. This dude. This dude, what was he in? He's, he's in quite a few movies. I can't remember if, off the top of my head. He's, it was in, it was played this smart-ass character one time. I can't remember which movie it was. Comment below. You, you'll know the one. you know the one. Oh, I know. National Lampoon's. National Lampoon's uh, Vegas Vacation. He was like the, uh, the croupier. A car dealer, and he was giving uh, Chevy Chase a hard time. Okay, apparently he looks like a seal. But um, oh, here we go. Here's a here's a Hitler cat. <laughs> I reckon I reckon that's my favorite. But there's actually a better one than this. Oh, we it was oh, there it is. This one here. I actually got the. I don't know. I don't know if that's been doctored. That's just like freaky. And they got the, like the comb over the hair there and a little mustache. You got Stalin. Mm, mm, yeah, so I see it. Little goatee, not quite right. But yeah, just just examples of the Google algorithm is just going to get it wrong all the time. So, what do you do? What do you do? You know, it's it's here to stay. I don't think it's going to get any better. It might get better in years and years and years and years of uh, punching images through. But everything's going to it's going to get flagged. It's going to say, oh no, it's not Donald Trump. You know, it's going to get flagged. You get a flag and it takes human intervention. That's uh, basically, besides you know, just uh, mitigating the whole the whole exercise is, is actually taking away the human human uh, intervention. Which they're trying to save time by using AI to, to get rid of all the boring tasks that we don't like doing. So everyone goes, oh, it's going to take your job. It's going, yeah, it's going to take all the stupid little shitty jobs that nobody wants to do. That's the jobs that's going to take away. And I'm, I'm quite happy for it to run through my photo library and meta tag it all. 
because it takes a long, long time to do it. I started doing it, I gave up. I thought, this is taking too long. I can, one of my photo programs, it's got facial recognition. It comes up with all, you know, I've got 200,000 photos in my photo library, so just imagine, imagine the work that needs to be done to do that. Actually, there was one here. Oh, is this the one here? Oh, yeah. Cats that look like celebrities. <laughs> this is the one. So we had uh, Jack Nicholson. Yep. Jack Nicholson in uh, here's Johnny. <laughs> here's Johnny. We got uh, dude from dude from uh, uh, MythBusters. Jack Black again. Donald Trump cat. Yeah, I'm sure this guy's famous. I'm sure, the little cat's famous. Do you reckon that's a toupee on him? I think that's a toupee on the cat. I reckon that's actually a real cat hair. And it's just a bit of bit of toupee. This is where I got the Hitler cat from before. I thought that was one of the funniest ones. It's just uncanny. That has that's serious. They have to color the cat. I've never seen a cat with that sort of markings on it like that. So who's this dude? Is he from Red Hot Chili Peppers? I think so. Batman. That was a good one. Batman. Batman is a cat. <laughs> Oh dear. Austin Powers. What's, what's the guy's name? Dr. Evil. Dr. <laughs> Evil. Einstein. Charlie Chaplin. Is it Cameron Brody? Is that the guy's name? I oh, know it's Brody. Brody's in there somewhere. That's quite cool. You know, Gollum. Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Now, these would have all been AI Google images matches. <laughs> the cat. The cat walking. Or it could be somebody just coming across an image. And we got uh, Excellent Smithers. There we go. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. So there we go, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can really can't see a solution to this. Uh, they're doing that workaround where they're just going to just block um, the output of Gorilla. So... Nobody gets offended, but this really hasn't really solved anything, has it? It's just now we're going to have troubles with. Uh, well, actually, it seems to, seems to work though, doesn't it? Because we do get gorilla images now that are working. But I think, I reckon, that, I reckon these are like images that have meta tags underneath them. I think from people's personal Google photos, they're not going to output. Gorilla and categorize them like that because that's what caused the problem in the first place. All right, guys. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that one. I hope it was a bit of a bit of a learning experience how AI works. But um, yeah, if if you've got a better solution on how to fix uh, the AI getting the images wrong, uh, leave your comments below because it's here to stay. You know, China's using it for all their uh, social credit network. Uh, AI facial recognition companies are using it just to save time and that sort of things has been implemented into photo programs uh, social media everything so it's going to be here to stay so we're going to we're going to learn to live with it all right guys so i'll see you next time cheers